Hey guys, this video lesson is going to be about completing the square. So solving quadratic equations by completing the square. Um, this is going to be essentially the fourth method we've talked about for solving quadratics. Uh, and this one can become really important um, if magic number doesn't work. Uh, so let's go ahead and get our background on here. Uh, let's take a look at our dot cam. We'll throw me in the corner. And we're going to slide over here. Um, first thing I want us to kind of revisit is how to solve quadratics. Um, we've talked about a couple ways already to solve quadratics. Um, the first is the very basic one, which is if all I have is an x squared and let's say equals, I don't know, 16. So this one here is pretty basic because we're just going to square root both sides because it's easy to get x alone. So in this case, x equals plus or minus 4. Well, then we became a little bit more complex, and I would have an x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. And this one I couldn't just take the square root of both sides because I have a middle term. So as soon as I had a middle term, I had to use magic number. And then the last way, which we just talked about, was graphing. And if I use the graphing method to solve a quadratic, I would look for the x-intercepts. Well, the method we're going to add today is called completing the square. Completing the square will work if you have options 1, 2, and 3 available. But completing the square is an option to use when magic number doesn't work. So if magic number doesn't work, completing the square gives us an option that will work. So let's take a look at the notes that we've got for completing the square. If you need to pause now to pull out your notes, then go ahead and do so and print out your notes for solving quadratics by completing the square. And I'll give you a moment to do that now as we then go ahead and get started. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just go through the process for completing the square and then we'll walk through it step by step. The first thing is, is that we want to make sure that a equals 1. That's the number in front of x squared. Now if this does not equal 1, we will need to divide the entire equation to make sure that it does equal 1. That's the easiest way to use completing the square. We're going to take C, so this term right here, and we're going to move it to the other side to do what I kind of refer to as creating a gap. We're going to create a hole in this equation. And then we're going to fill the hole. Well, in order to fill the hole, we're going to take half of B. So whatever number B is, we're going to take half of it, and then we're going to square whatever that resulting number is. So for example, let's say B is 4. We're going to take half of that, which is 2. And then we're going to square it, and we're going to get 4 again. Let's say it was 10. We'll take half of 10, which is 5. We'll square it, which equals 25. The resulting number we get, we're going to use that to fill in the gap. We're going to add that number to both sides. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug it in the gap. And then we're going to add it to the other side because we have to maintain balance. And then we're going to factor using perfect squares. So that's going to be our shortcut that we've talked about months ago. And then we're going to square root both sides and solve for x. Okay. So let's kind of take a look at what that is. All right. After we've kind of gone through this and have these notes out, leave this off to the side. And we're going to refer back and forth to them. What I'd like you to do is get out your assignment, which is 13-4. And I want you to go to the reteaching worksheet. Now the reteaching worksheet has an example that's worked out from beginning to end, but I'm going to work it out for you so we can kind of see what ends up happening there. So we're going to go over here, and this is our example. x squared plus 2x minus 15 equals 0. All right, and we're going to go through our notes. We're going to say, okay, make sure a equals 1, and then move c to create a gap. The first thing is a equals 1. And let's move C to the other side to create a gap. So we're going to add 15 to both sides. Okay. 
we're going to create a gap and we're going to have the 15 on the other side so this works a little bit opposite of what we've been doing before because we've always wanted it to equal zero so that's steps one and two and if we come back here steps three and four take half of b which is the middle term and then square it well the middle term is two so over here i'm going to take half of two so we're going to take two and divide it by two which equals one i'm doing it off to the side because this is going to help us later because when we're dealing with fractions this can be very beneficial for us well let's square this number what is one squared that equals one so i'm going to put one here in the gap and i'm going to add one to the other side so i can maintain my balance well, this x squared plus 2x plus 1 is a shortcut from before. And if I factor it, this becomes x plus 1 quantity squared equals 16. So if you remember, if I have quantity squared, that's because it's a perfect square at the beginning and the end, and then I add it together to make the middle term. Well, now that this is a quantity squared, everything on the left side of the equation is all squared. So I can now undo squared by square rooting. And I'm going to square root both sides. Now remember, when you put a square root symbol into the equation, I have to have plus or minus. So the squared and the square root will cancel each other out. And I'm left with x plus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of 16, which is 4. And now I'm going to get x alone. So I'm going to subtract 1 to both sides. And x is going to equal positive 4 minus 1. And it's also going to equal negative 4 minus 1. So the positive 4 and the negative 4 create two answers. So x equals 3 and x equals negative 5. <clears throat> so I've got two possible answers as we go through and do that. Okay. So let's take a look now at another example. If we continue to work on this page here, Right. What I would like us to do, first of all, is on the reteach page, I want us to go down to number five. So number five from the reteach page. 3y squared minus 2y minus 1 equals 0. And I bring this up because this is going to have fractions throughout that we're going to have to negotiate with. Well, step one is to make sure that the first term is 1. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to divide everything in the problem by 3. So this becomes y squared minus 2 thirds y minus 1 third equals 0. Now we're going to have to work with fractions. This is going to be the difficult part on some of these is that we have to work with fractions. Well, let's create our gap. So let's move the one third over. So I get y squared minus two thirds y plus, here's my gap, equals one third. So I set a equal to one. I created the gap. I now need to take my middle term, which is b, so I need to take negative 2 thirds, and I need to take half of that. All right, so I'm going to take half of negative 2 thirds. Well, remember, keep change flip. So negative 2 thirds times 1 half equals negative 2 sixths. Negative 2 sixths negative one-third. So half, which makes sense, half of negative two-thirds is negative one-third. Now remember, square it. We're going to save this number here because we're going to need it later. Negative one-third squared, negative one-third times negative one-third is positive one 
ninth. Whenever I add to one side, I have to balance and add to the other. Now remember, common denominator here, so this is going to be one ninth and one third, which becomes four ninths. So I have four ninths over here. And in my quantity squared, I have y minus one third quantity squared. You may be asking, how did I know that this was negative one third in the parentheses for quantity squared? Well, by square root one ninth, it's going to be one third. But the big key is, and this is why I told you to put a circle around it, this number right here, half the middle term, that number is always going to be what goes here in the parentheses. If we go back up to this example up here, remember, what did I get when I took half? I had one. What went in the parentheses? The one. So when you take half of that middle term, save this number. This will always go back in the parentheses. Well, let's square root both sides because the opposite of squaring is the square root. And I'm going to get y minus 1 third equals, don't forget, plus or minus. And the square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of 9 is 3. Let's add one third to both sides. And I'm going to get y equals positive two thirds plus one third and negative two thirds plus one third. So y equals three thirds, which is one, and negative one third for the other answer. So we set it equal to one. I add the one third to the other side to create the gap. I take half of the middle term and then I square it to give me the one ninth. And then I simplify and solve from there. Well, let's take a look at one final example because this is one that is not going to work out with magic number. The first two examples we did magic number would have worked. Here's an example where magic number will not work. So the final one we'll do together is going to be number seven from the reteach page. And that's n squared plus 16n plus 14 equals zero. Well, first things first, set this equal to 1. It already is, so that's easy. Let's go ahead and create our gap. So let's subtract 14 to both sides. n squared plus 16n plus a gap equals negative 14. After my gap, take the middle one, 16, and take half of it divided by 2 equals 8. Let's square 8, which gives me 64. So 64 goes in the gap. Now whatever I add to one side, I add to the other to maintain balance. Well, negative 14 and positive 64 is going to equal 50. And this becomes n plus 8 quantity squared. Remember, this number right here, I always want to remember what it was when I took half of it, because that's going to be what goes in the quantity squared. Let's square root both sides. n plus 8 equals plus or minus the square root of 50. This is the first example where what I have here is not a perfect square. This answer is going to have radicals left in it. So let's subtract 8. I line that up off to the side because it's not in the radical. So n equals plus or minus radical 50 minus 8. Now in order for this to look better, I'm going to move it to the front. But then I also have to remember that there are perfect squares in 50. 
And the reason why I want to move the negative 8 in it to the front is so that it is not mistaken for being inside the radical. Well, let's take radical 50 off to the side. And we're going to simplify that like we did last week into 25 and 2. And the square root of 25 is 5 radical 2. So the final answer is going to be negative 8 plus or minus 5 radical 2. And I can write that as two separate answers, which is negative 8 plus 5 radical 2 and negative 8 minus 5 radical 2. And because both of these have a radical left in them, if I was to use a calculator, this would give me an awful decimal because it's an irrational number. So the problems where magic number would not work, there still could be answers. It's just that those answers are going to have radicals in them because it doesn't factor out evenly. So your job for homework is going to be, we used 13-4 reteach to work together. Your homework is going to be to do 13-4 and you're going to want to do 1 through 11. Now before I send you on your way, one of the things that I want to show you for your homework is going to be problems 10 and 11. Don't allow 10 and 11 to intimidate you. Get rid of fractions. Get rid of decimals. Remember, if I want to get rid of fractions, multiply this entire equation by 2. And number 11, if I want to get rid of decimals, multiply the entire equation by 10. That would get rid of your fractions and decimals at the start. Now remember, even though you get rid of fractions and decimals, remember step 1. Make sure that A equals 1. That is important. So if you get rid of fractions and decimals, that's fine. You can do so because you can maintain balance. But remember step one, make sure that A equals one because for completing the square, that's the easiest way to do it. I hope that this video helps. And if you have questions, be sure to reach out to me.